And then you think, well, what does it mean? What does it mean that what you see first is the meaning? And that's a really tricky question because you might say, well, that's, that's when you get back to the problem of what constitutes real. So I could say, well, you've evolved to see the meaning. Well, then we might ask, well, if you've evolved to see the meaning and that's kept you alive, is there anything more real than the meaning? Because somebody who's a materialist would say, well, no, the object is more real. It's like, no, it depends on how you define real. It might be that the most real thing about the visual cliff is that that's a falling off place and that its secondary description as a, you know, an object, a hole or something like that, that's just a, that's something you paint over top of the primary reality. And so, well, here's, and here's a practical application of it, or at least one of the things that I think is practical. You know, you can have experiences that di differ in their, let's call it high quality meaning. You know, so you get engaged and engrossed in something and you're happy about that. It's not that you're happy. It's that you're engaged and engrossed in it. You would do it again, even though it might take, take effort. You can tell that where you are is meaningful. Well, I think what happens in that situation is that you're in a Piagetian place where many of the games that you're playing are stacked sort of isomorphically on top of one another. And the experience of meaning is the fact that you're playing the small game properly nested inside a larger game, you're playing it properly, nested inside a larger game, you're playing it properly too, etc., all the way out. Past is balanced, future is balanced, everything is stacked up. And there's a report coming from your being telling you that, that's why you're engaged. You might say, well, maybe that's real. Maybe it's more real than anything else. Uh, it's a strange thing, because if you think that meaning is separate and secondary from the real objective world, then the reality is the object. But it isn't obvious that the reality is the object. It's certainly, it's certainly not how we act. It's not how we perceive. And so, did we evolve to perceive reality? It depends on what you mean by perceive. Perceive might mean, did we evolve mechanisms that allowed us to survive in the face of that reality? Yes. Is that what's real? What enables you to survive in the face of reality? It's a definition. It's a perfectly reasonable definition, unless you can come up with a better one. Meanings are primary. Now, that brings, up an, that brings up a strange issue. So what determines the meaning of what it is that you're perceiving? Well, this is where Binswanger and Boss disagree. Binswanger says, it's, it's the a priori ontological structure, the world design or matrix of meaning. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you have a particular history biological and cultural and individual. And you're viewing the world through the lens of that, of that set of particularities. So it's almost as if you're behind a curtain and the curtain has certain holes in it. And you can see through the holes in the curtain, and, but the curtain is your construction. So the curtain with the holes determines what you see. Well, Boss would say, no, it's the opposite in, in a very strange thing. It's that the meaning of the world manifests itself to you more or less of its own accord and that's it's a tougher one to explain <sighs> disclosure of meaning boss the revelation of the object the emergent, uh, emergence of the phenomenon the numinous the very word phenomena is derived from phanes thigh to shine forth to appear to unveil itself to come out of concealment or darkness okay here's an example you see someone beautiful your perception or is it your perception or does the beauty exist? That's the difference between Binswanger and Boss, because Binswanger would say, well, the reason that that thing appears to you is beautiful is because of the way you're filtering it. And Boss would say, no, the beauty is in inheres in the object itself and manifests itself. It shines forth. And so I really like this concept, this, this concept of phenomena. That's why they're phenomenologists. Fainesthai means to shine forth. From, from the phenomenological perspective, you pursue those things that shine forth.